हेलो फ्रेंड्स और वेलकम टू स्टडी खजाना टुडे वी गोइंग टू स्टडी द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ एन सी दैट इज इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज एंड फील्ड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज एंड बिफोर दैट वी मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ व्हाट इज इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ साइंस विच डील्स विद द स्टडी ऑफ चार्जेस एंड द इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स The word electrostatics is derived from the two words electro and statics. Electro means electric and statics mean stationary. So it is a branch of science that deals with the study of elect with the study of electric charge. field electric potential due to charges at rest so after that what is what is the electric charge the very first parameter in the electrostatics is electric charge so what is electric charge electric charge is nothing but the gain and loss of electron when the atom gains some electron it get a negative charge and when it loses an electron that uh, then it go, uh, then it have a positive charge so electron uh, charge is nothing but the gain excess or deficiency of electron after that we friend after that friends we must be aware of conductor insulators conductors conductors are the materials these are the materials of which allow the movement of electron example is approximately all metals like electric wire metals are conductors a good example of conductor because they allow the electric current to pass through it next is insulators insulators are the materials which don't allow the movement of electron they don't allow the electrons to pass through them example is glass wood plastic because when we pass electric current to the plastic we don't find any observation because the electron not able to not able to move from their position next next are the properties of electric charge which is very important as per examination point of view that is properties of electric charge so the very first property of electric charge is the additivity of charge let's see additivity of charge 
according to this property if the system contains charges any of charges like minus 9 29 or 39 59 then the total charge will, uh, will be the exactly uh, exactly sum of these charges means a, a, a simple addition operation will be performed in this like for example if a system contains charges plus 9 plus 29 plus 39 plus 59 then total charge will be equal to plus 9 plus 29 plus 39 plus 59 The next property is conservation of charge. Like the conservation of energy, there is a conservation of charge which resembles with the conservation of energy. So let's see. According to this property, the total charge of an isolated system is always constant. The total electric charge of an isolated system remains same or constant. So it is not possible. create or destroy net charge however charge carrying conductor can be changed created or destroy so a very good example of the conservation or of charge is the nuclear energy the nuclear reactors in nuclear reactors the transfer of energy or charge is always constant example is uranium this is atomic number and this is a mass number that is 233 it gets separated into thromium having atomic number 90 and mass number 234 and helium Next is the quantization of electric charge, the third property of the electric charge. According to this property, it is a property by the virtue of which all free electric charges are integral multiples of the basic charge of an electron and proton.
of basic charge of an electron and proton that is q is equal to n e where n is an integer can be a positive or negative in integer q is a quantization of electric charge and e is a charge of charge on electron the next is coulomb's law so according to coulomb's law which is a very important topic the definition of coulomb's law is that the force of interaction between any two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges so the definition is the force of interaction between any two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charge and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two point charges To study this we will study the mathematical expression of coulomb's law So if we have a two point charges q1 and q2 separated by a distance r then the force of interaction between the two point charges q1 and q2 will be directly proportional to the product of the charge and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them if we combine both the equations 1 and equation 2 we get q1 q2 divided by r square if we remove this proportionality we get a proportionality constant where c is a proportionality constant and the value of c is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not k so f is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not k q1 q2 divided by r square where epsilon not is a absolute electric permittivity of free space so if we get the ma uh, magnitude if we want to uh, find out the magnitude of this force 
we will put the value of k equal to 1 and we get this and to find out the magnitude of f magnitude of f is represented by this and this will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon f naught q1 magnitude charge q point charge q2 magnitude divided by r square now the units of epsilon naught which is equal to we know that force equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square if we find the value of epsilon naught we get 1 upon 4 pi f q1 q2 by r square here the unit of force is Newton 4 pi is constant so constant term don't have any SI unit force equals to Newton the SI unit of charge is ampere so ampere square and R the distance between the two point charges that is meter sorry it is, it is coulomb coulomb square the unit of, unit of electric charge is coulomb and that of electric current is ampere so it will be coulomb square newton raised to power minus 1 meter raised to power minus 2 is a unit of epsilon naught now the dimensions of epsilon naught is equals to we use this formula AT force is equals to mass into acceleration so mass will be equal to M acceleration is equals to LT minus 2 because acceleration is equals to velocity divided by time Un velocity is equals to meter per second divided by time so equals to meter per time square which will be equals to here mass equals to 0 L is equals to 1 time is equals to minus 2 this is the unit of acceleration so force will be equals to here mass into acceleration mass equals to 1 L is equals to 1 T is equals to minus 2 this is the unit dimensions of force so force is equals to M L T raised to power minus 2 M 0 because meter square M stands for mass L stands for length T raised stands for time so T raised to power minus 2 M0 L2 T0 after that we get this value and it is to power 2 this is the dimension of epsilon naught now if we study the Coulomb's law in vector Coulomb's law in vector form here we will study the three dimension uh, three dimension structure where two point charges q1 and q2 are placed at point a and point b this is point a and this is point b two point charges q1 and q2 are placed at point a and point b which are at a distance suppose this is point B this is origin the point uh, the point charge Q1 is placed at a distance R1 from origin at is and it uh, Q2 is at a distance R2 from origin
F12 is a force acting on point charge Q1 due to point charge Q2. Q2. Similarly, F21 will be because force is a vector quantity, we are representing it by using vector force acting on point charge Q2 due to Q1. Now the derivation of this. in vector form so first of all what is R1 according to diagram R1 is OA and R2 is OB so R1 can be represented by OA vector which is the position vector position vector of R1 and R2 is represented by OB vector that is a position vector of point charge Q1 and point charge Q2 the vector leading from Q1 to Q2 that is AB vector represented by this in the diagram AB vector this is AB vector AB vector will be equal to R12 R12 will be equal to R2 minus R1 R2 vector minus R1 vector next the vector leading from point charge Q2 to point charge Q1 will be repre uh, represented by BA vector B A vector will be equals to R21 vector and R21 vector will equal to R1 minus R2 vector. Let left F1 F21 that is a force acting on F2 due to F1. on that is a force acting on point charge Q2 due to Q1 R cap is equals to F21 vector divided by F21 that is the magnitude of F1 F21 F21 is equals to F21 into R cap we uh, friends as we know that force is equals to the product of the charges 1, up, uh, one upon 4 pi epsilon node and the distance between two of them that is R12 square into R12 cap so it uh, force will be equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by R12 and this R12 from equation 1 equals to R12 vector and magnitude of this using this 
equation 1. After that, we get 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 r12 here is square so we get cube r12 force acting on point charge f2 point charge q1 due to q or q2 due to q1 equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 because R12 is equals to R2 minus R1. So we put this value, we get R2 by R1 minus R1 cube divided by. So finally we get this value of force. If we compare this formula with the Newton's third law, similarity of Newton's third law. According to Newton's third law, to every action there is equal and opposite reaction. So if we compare the Newton's third law with this force, we get the force acting on point charge Q2 due to Q1 will be equals to minus of the force acting on point charge Q1 due to Q2. So, to, this will resembles Coulomb's law. So, we can say that Coulomb's law obeys Newton's third law. And what is Newton's third law? That is to every action there is equal and opposite reaction. A very good example of Newton's third law is the recoiling of gun. In re uh, recoiling of gun, if we fire the gun, we get a jerk on our back. Uh, which shows that to every action there is equal and opposite reaction which is also uh, we can uh, observe in the Coulomb's law also. So Coulomb's law obeys Newton's third law. This is the conclusion of this. So friends this is all about the very lecture, very first lecture of electrostatics in which we study the Coulomb's law and Coulomb's law in vector form specifically. So in the next lecture we will study about the electric field, electric potential and how a Coulomb law is used in electric potential, electric field. Thank you very much.